Life Audio. Hello. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for our lives. I'm your host, Kyle Norman. After a brief message from one of our sponsors, we will continue with our series, Moses, From Fearful to Faithful, with a discussion of today's verse, Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 27. Today's verse can be found in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 27. Go up to the top of Pisgah and look around you from the west to the north, to the south and to the east. Look well, for you shall not cross over the Jordan. How do you think Moses might have felt, knowing that he would not enter the land of promise? After all those years, toiling with Israel through the desert, he was not the man to lead the people across the river. If you remember... Moses learned about this after he disobeyed God in bringing water from the rock that second time. So after a 40-year slog, Moses would not get to declare that the work was done and that the people had come home. There's a certain heartbreak here. Moses implores God to allow him to continue the journey. Moses acknowledges that he had sinned when he failed to speak water from the rock But he had been forgiven and he had been redeemed. And since that time, Moses had grown in faith and in character. Moses says that he had begun to learn God's greatness and might, that there was no one beyond God in all the heavens. When we read Moses' prayer, there's no hostility, there's no condemnation, no judgment in his speech. Moses prays to God in all familiarity and earnestness. Please, O God, let me go across. Please, let me see this to the end. Still, God says no. Moses would not cross the river. He would not see the completion of the Exodus journey. The promised land would be Joshua's ministry, not his. Have you ever experienced this? Have you ever prayed for something, something that was good and wonderful and blessed, only to hear a resounding no? Have you ever witnessed something that you hoped for happen without you? Let's just pause and acknowledge how hard this can be. The fact is, we don't always experience that which we have prayed for or enter that which we have worked towards. There are times when our own frailties keep us from seeing the full realization of God's work or God's promise. But if we see this account as simply an execution of judgment, then we miss something profound. Because God is gracious, and there is good news here. Moses isn't just reminded that he won't enter the promised land. He is reminded that God's promise was being fulfilled. The fact was, whether it was through Moses or Joshua, Israel was about to enter the land of promise because God had been faithful. And even though Moses isn't going to cross, God blesses Moses with a vision of the promise. Amid the sadness of being so close to the promised land and not being able to step foot into it, Moses is allowed to glimpse all that he had worked for. God takes Moses up to the top of Mount Pisgah to view the land. Now, God didn't have to do that. God could have just ended Moses' journey without such a vision, but God is gracious. And so, in an act of loving kindness, Moses gets to spy the entire expanse of promise. He is graced to look in faith upon the completion of his ministry. He's given a foretaste, a blessed vision of redemption. And I believe that in that moment, up on that mountain, it was one of profound exaltation and rejoicing. Because Moses' life and his ministry, amid all of his human flaws, was always to be more about what God was doing rather than what he accomplished. 
And so even though he couldn't cross the river, he could still rejoice in the Lord's redemption. Where is God giving you a vision of redemption? Where is God giving you a confirmation of grace, of healing, of fulfillment, even if those things don't seem to be present in your life this moment? Our life in God should never be about our own plans or about our own experiences, but about following the Lord's wishes. Because faithfulness is about being more concerned with the Lord's work in us and through us than about bringing about what we would like to see occur, even if those things are good. That's why we end our prayers by saying, in Jesus' name. That's why James reminds us to say that if it is the Lord's will, we will go forward in this way or that. Our participation in God's work in this world is always by way of grace. And more than our own accolades or our own accomplishments, The work of God is to be our focus and our delight. And that means that we can know that the one who began a good work in us will continue it to completion, whether that occurs in our midst or not. In faith, we can know that the finalization of God's work will come about because it depends not on our ability, but on God's promises. And so whether we see this fulfillment with our eyes or with the eyes of our faith, we can rejoice because God is faithful. Mm